Welcome to the Stuff and Things Podcast. Your home for all stuff related to your favorite things in entertainment. Now, here are your hosts. That is right, we are back again for The Last of Us. This is episode 7, Left Behind, and joining me as ever is Kaylee. Hello! How How are are you? you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. How did you you find this episode? How much do you hate me? Scale of 1 to 10, let's go. Well, um, I don't think it's uh, there's a scale that I could hit, to be honest. No, I feel like this is a show that's just it's not making our friendship easier. Like, no, it's not. It's really not. How you can keep quiet on things that you know are coming, you don't even have the decency to pre warn me, it's just fucking sick. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Before we before we go into the episode itself, um. Just a quick apology, this podcast is a day late. I'm sorry for all you guys that were waiting. Um, Sam, unfortunately, still has his back injury and is unable to record at the moment. And I've just spent a fun 30 hours in hospital myself. I'm all okay now, but uh, we are once again sending our best wishes to Sam and hopefully we will get him back before the end of this series. Uh, Mainly because we have The Mandalorian to film, uh, record. You don't like Star Wars, and I don't think anyone wants to hear me talking to myself for an hour about a TV show. So we're hoping you know, Sam gets better soon. Absolutely, and as much as I love everyone that listens, I don't want to watch anything Star Wars related. Don't come at me. It's just not my thing. It's not your thing, that's not, fine. Not the right age. It's just a no from me. <laughs> Um, no, fair enough. No, fair enough. Um, I have somehow managed to get you to watch The Last of Us, though, so that's a, that's a bonus. Yeah, and um, I'm never going to listen to you again. I hope you know that. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to get you to watch any more new shows, that's for sure. Um, I, I put in our, we've got our little WhatsApp group, and if you're not part of it as well, we have our own Discord server. Um, if you go on to our social media pages, by the time you've heard this, we would have uploaded the links to the show um, and in there will be the link to join the chats on our Discord server. We have got one up there about The Mandalorian with the new show just starting. We have also got the server dedicated to The Last of Us as well. So jump on there and give us a chat as well. Keep in touch with us that way as well. Um, I have put in our WhatsApp group about this episode. So Left Behind was the name of the DLC that came out after... The Last of Us game had been released. So a lot of people played the game start to finish, had thought that was it, it was done, and then they dropped this downloadable added content, which was basically an extra story mode, all about Ellie and her past before she met Joel. I Um. hold my hands up and say I never actually played it. Um, So this was a really fun episode for me because... At last, I'm in the same boat as you and Sam, as in, (laughs) I have no idea what was going to happen. And that made it really strange. Like, I kind of... Do you feel what I feel every week now? Do you get my feeling? Every week, I just know that there's... And I don't know what it is, but I know there's something coming, and I don't like that fear. So I'm glad you feel that now. Yeah, it was like... (laughs) I was um, I was talking to a, a guy called Ryan that listens to all our podcasts as well. He's on the Discord server quite a lot. And he messaged me about it. And he was the same. He was like, I've never been just waiting for a jump scare. Like an entire episode. It was like, everything's going too well. Everything's mm. going very nice. There's no real big problems. I'm waiting for a jump scare. And I'm like, yeah, same. Like all the other episodes, I've kind of roughly worked out where in the game it is. What's going to be happening next? Like, I was waiting for Joel to get stabbed in that episode. And yeah. obviously, in this episode, we see the aftermath of Joel being yeah. stabbed. Um, how, did you, how did you feel about watching that? I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I just don't know. I was not expecting it. Because of the conversation we'd had the week before, I thought that was it, game over. So yeah. when he came up on screen... Again, like I normally do, there was a funny little yelp 
from me and everyone in the room went, what the fuck's the matter with you? <laughs> um, and I was like, he, he's, he's not dead. I was so happy. And then I thought, this cannot be real. And I was waiting for the inevitable to happen. And I thought, is this a flashback? Is this now? What's going on? It really confused me. Is he going to be dead um, by the end of the episode? What's happening? Yeah, it, it really put me on edge. And it's all I could think about the whole way through the episode. <laughs> oh, no. Now, talking about our, our WhatsApp group and stuff, I've just got... So, Sam watched the episode a little bit after we did. Oh, I know. I thought he'd seen it. Um, but <laughs> he decided when he watched it, he was going to say, look, the message was, finally watching this week's episode. As you two have seen it, I shall write my reactions here for you both to read as I go. So, for the listeners, this is Sam's input from uh, for this episode. It was flashback, palm face emoji, laughing emoji. Those of you that know Sam knows he loves a flashback. Loves it. It's like his <laughs> favourite thing is when flashbacks happen. He, can, oh, he punches the air and everything, bless him. Um, he then put, her finding dead body, crazy reaction. Um, I'm guessing this is how the, this is the story of how she got infected. And then 40 minutes later, when I saw that coming a mile off, not sure we needed that episode. So before we go into details about going through the episode, let's just get an overall here. Because I believe me and you are both fairly the same in that we love this episode and don't agree with Sam's, we don't need it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've i seen a lot of um, reaction online to this episode. You know, it's a filler. We didn't need it. What's all this nonsense? We didn't need to see her kissing another girl. You know, all that normal spouting bollocks that you see from certain groups of people. Yeah. But for me, do you know what? It was actually one of my favourite episodes. I really enjoyed it and I really liked it kind of bridged the gap for me. You know, we know that The Last of Us isn't a typical zombie gore fest. It's yeah. It's got a really meaningful story to it. And it's done a really good job of making you just fall in love with these characters, even if they die every week. I think that's my <laughs> biggest issue is the fact that, like, you know, it is coming to terms with, in the game, it, you can get away with it in a game where, like, characters come in and out quite quickly in a game. It's fine because you might put that game down for a week and then come back to it. Yeah. Um, in this, it's literally like, here's a character, you're going to really like them, now they're dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, every week. It definitely, it definitely wasn't a filler episode for me. I needed to see that. I needed to see pre-Joel Ellie. I needed to understand her backstory. And yeah. it, it was really clever because actually, for me, it's raised the stakes even higher, seeing what she's been through. And then the... The, the risk of losing Joel, you know, and, and whoever else comes into her life. It just makes me feel so much more empathy for Ellie. Yeah, in the last episode, she makes a big point of losing everyone that she's trusted. Yeah. And then the next episode, we literally see that it happened right yeah. in front of her and stuff. And yeah, it was... It's just fucking soul crushing. And I, I say this every week. I cannot... I, I dread a Monday because I know that I've got to sit and watch it. <laughs> But and at I the just, same time, you can't help but sit and watch it. I, yeah, I can't stop myself. But I, I, it, I say I enjoy it, but I don't know if I do. I hate watch it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Does that I, make sense? I can't tell if the creator of this show is an absolute genius or a sadistic. Yeah. 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 It's, it's somewhere um, in the middle, I think. <laughs> yeah. He's got all yeah, these people, like... all these people coming back to watch it. Every week we are coming back to watch it, and every week it's finishing, and it's like, and everyone okay. just yeah, and, okay, yeah. Fine. But I, I think it was a really good idea to include this though, because if you played the game and you you played this after, it would I imagine it would kind of make things make a bit more sense. Yeah. If they hadn't have included this, A, we probably wouldn't have seen it, or how, you know, how would they have shoehorned this in? Because you can't just go, oh, here's a a flashback episode at the end of the series. Yeah, because. This is like you know? three weeks earlier. It doesn't really work if the series yeah. is ended. Yeah. No, but it was. I I really enjoyed it. It was one of my favourites, um, and it was it was really nostalgic, probably because of the setting. And I could just pit, put myself into that mall at the age of seventeen, eighteen, whatever, with the girls, you know. And it was just, it was lovely for the most part. 
<laughs> for the most part. So let, let's break it down a bit and let's go back to the beginning. And so the beginning of the episode is we see Joel is basically telling Ellie to leave him. He thinks he's a goner. Telling Ellie to leave. She's telling him to shut up and ends up getting pushed, pretty much pushed across the room. Leave me alone. I'm obviously realising I'm going to die. Go to Tommy. Now, when he's telling her to go get Tommy, I couldn't quite work out if that was a go back to Tommy, you'll be safe, or go back to Tommy because he might be able to come save me. Um, I took it as Joel sending her back to stay with Tommy because I think Tommy, he knows Tommy would look after her. And I don't Tommy think also be... knows the backstory of Ellie of why she has to be protected. So it makes sense. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where my mind went. I don't think, I think Joel knew or kind of had an idea that if he sent Ellie away to come back, it would have been pointless. It would have been too late. Makes sense. Um, we then see her kind of go, go to get supplies by the looks of it. And she gets to a door handle. The door is open. And then we get the flashback starts. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've got absolutely no relevance to what the door being slightly open was <clears throat> to the flashback. But that is where the flashback starts. And we find Ellie with her Sony Walkman, which I loved as a throwback thing. Yeah. <laughs> Bearing in mind this has all happened, kind of, you know, the apocalypse means to be kind of like now sort of days. So there was better things than Sony Walkmans out there, surely. But yeah, it was the I 90s, loved the nostalgic it? kind of thing going back to it. Yeah, um, it was the 90s, so Walkmans were a thing in the 90s, weren't true. they? No, true. We're not all as tech savvy as you. No, this is also very true. <laughs> he says, looking at his new recording deck, going, I wonder if I pressed mm. the right button. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've got her. She is running around doing gym class for Fedra. So we get a bit of a showing of what kind of the schools and things were like at Fedra. We've had a mention a couple of times. Um, now seeing her doing gym class and... A Bethany appears and is basically telling Ellie to get her ass in gear because there's no way they're doing double laps just because she's plodding along with her Walkman. Um, this to me kind of came up with like the typical kind of teenage school kind of thing. Um, yeah. Having been one of those guys in school that wasn't particularly athletic. I know what it feels like to just be jogging around the school field being told by the smarter, like the faster kids, will you hurry up? We're not doing extra just because you're lazy. <laughs> so I kind of, I felt that one on a, on a personal level. Um, Bethany doesn't give the Walkman back. Ellie hits her. And then we see a, this is kind of like one of the first meetings we've had with a Fedra um, kind of, I guess, officer where they've got a bit more bit more personality talking to Ellie and stuff. Mm. Uh, explain to her about how how the world is going to kind of be now. You can either be one of these people or one of those people. Yeah. And you can see <laughs> Ellie's kind of thinking about it. And for the most part, bearing in mind where Ellie was when we kind of meet her with Joel, this is only three weeks earlier. She does seem to kind of be very Fedra headspace. Mm -hmm. That chat, I feel like that chat does get through to her. And she's ready to kind of go full Fedra. Yeah. Um, we find out in the episode she's definitely against the Fireflies, the terrorists mm -hmm. of, the, of the world at that stage. Um, and that night she's in bed and her, her old best friend reappears. Um, quite obviously now a, a Firefly explains it to her and tells her to come with her because she's going to give her like a brilliant night or something like that in the mall. Well, mm -hmm. we don't know it's at the mall at this point. Um, I quite like the scene of them kind of running and jumping over rooftops and showing oh. how well um, the friend knows kind of how to... How to avoid everyone, I guess. Yeah, she's very good at kind of navigating the space, isn't she? Yes. Um, but that that <laughs> that scene of them jumping over those roofs was a, a real twitchy bum moment for me. I hate stuff like that. <laughs> you can just imagine Riley makes the jump and Ellie doesn't. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's what I was waiting for. Like, is this how she dies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? How did Ellie get bit? Well, she made the jump wrong and landed on top of one of the Yeah. Roofs. Yeah. Um, but they do get to the mall. Now, what was your thoughts on kind of the mall stuff when they get there? So they're jumping down um, th 
through like the area and mm-hmm. there's a little bit for me so ellie's flashlight the stuttering having to hit the flashlight to make it work yeah now for me having played the game that really made me smile because there is a common part of the game where your flashlight runs out of battery and you have to shake your playstation controller uh, <laughs> and when you shake it it recharges it and your torch turns back on oh that's a clever little detail so her jumping down there and it not working and her shaking the torch and hitting it just made me sit there going oh i spent most of the game doing that because i yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah so that i really enjoyed that little part of it but but yeah what were your what were your thoughts when they when they got to the mall um I think there was two ways it could have gone for me. It could have been they're going to go in here and there's going to be this huge fight scene. It's going to be overrun with clickers and, you know, infected and stuff. And it's going to be all the whole episode is going to be about that story of how she got infected. And, you know, that was where the direction it was going to go. Or she was going to walk through that door and there was going to be um, Fedra people there. And then uh, Riley gets kind of shipped off because they think she's defected, you know. Yeah. Um, I wasn't, it, I was very pleasantly surprised when she turned the lights on. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be like that at all. Yeah, um, it, it kind of made me smile a bit because obviously we've had that big conversation between the two of them. Oh, Fedra don't tell lies. Fireflies is all propaganda. <laughs> oh, uh, we're going to the mall. We can't, it's shut off. Then why is it not shut off? Yeah. And, sort of, and yeah. they get there, turn the lights on, you kind of see Ellie's eyes just light up of like Oh, it's just magical. It's like it's just like a child at Christmas, you know, and they come down the stairs and their eyes light up. It was like that. And it I like those little moments because you can see that Ellie she's still a child, you know, they've had this really sheltered upbringing. And these little moments for me just make me just love her even more because yeah. you just think, oh, God, it's just so cute, you know. Oh, yeah, she's, what, she's 14, 15 in this, Ellie. And Riley, I think, was yeah. Riley was 17. Now, yeah. I don't think we can go any further without talking about the escalators. <laughs> now, for me, this scene was just fantastic <laughs> because I've got a seven-year-old and a five-year-old um, here. And not that long ago, maybe a year ago or so, the, the five-year-old went on his first escalators because <laughs> normally he's carried but this was the first time he stepped on them himself and very similar very very similar so i was really kind of enjoying this moment of like that pure innocent childness of like never experiencing something as simple as escalators yeah there are so many different rites of passage in this whole episode and that's really what i took from it um, you know, those first tentative steps onto that escalator. And, you know, we've all been there. The ones in the airport are the ones that get me. Even now, you know, at Heathrow and stuff, where you've got the ones that kind of carry you along. The completely just flat, flat ones that are just moving forward. Yeah. yeah. They, they terrify me. And even now I get on them and I'm like, oh, look at me go, you know. Um, so around tube- walking backwards, look at me go. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be a kid to do that kind of stuff, you know. You can do it whenever you like. <laughs> 32 and I still do the whole walking backwards or something yeah absolutely absolutely but things like that you know those and there's loads of those kind of moments in this episode that you just just, you just feel it deep down in your soul don't you (laughs) yeah oh completely completely um now so they go through they start looking at the shops now this was one of the things that really really made me laugh a lot of this episode was when Riley's kind of explaining the looting situation (laughs) <laughs> everyone needs sneakers but nobody needs soap nobody needs soap or fancy underwear that absolutely cracked me up like i was proper <laughs> laughing at that and then <laughs> i so i watched the episode with the wife and the in-laws and we all watch it together and we've, we've actually paused the tv at this point because we're all laughing and we are talking to each other and we're like that's so true like that's so true everyone would go for the looting of well, if I'm going to run around, I need to have decent footwear. And if I'm going to do this, I want to look good doing it. And the last thing that crosses your mind is, I'm going to break into a soap shop and yeah. take loads of soap. Yeah, but see, this is where I'm different. I would I would absolutely grab the wrong stuff. I'd be like, oh, I've been looking at that for the past six months. I've put myself. Yeah. 
finally got that new coat I always wanted. Yeah. 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 Oh, I like that makeup. That lipstick. Nice. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> you may be infected, but heck, you're going to be looking good doing it. Yeah. I'll let me doing it. Absolutely. Brilliant. Um, I, I also quite like now, a boy's point of view, I'm guessing, is very different to a girl's point of view of the first time they see a Victoria's Secret. Yes. Yeah. And they're just looking at it going, well, that looks really uncomfortable. <laughs> well, every woman thinks it looks uncomfortable, but it doesn't stop you buying it. <laughs> no. That's the thing. Now, as a guy's point of view, that whole scene was just kind of me chuckling, going, oh, okay, fair enough. I, I'm guessing it's kind of, again, like you say, the rite of passage kind of thing of growing up of when you first look at those shops to when you actually first buy something from one of those shops. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean. You know, these tiny little things that some people probably, men especially, um, probably wouldn't even think about. Like with the, the diva cut in the episode before and yeah. the tampax, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's those those small little details are, are what make this show so good. And it, it um, is, it's one of those things of so me and I think me and Sam both said like we've watched eleven odd years, twelve years of The Walking Dead. Mm. No one has ever mentioned a sanitary product. Ever yes, in those twelve years. Yeah, but and you know what? It's kind of sad that I'm, I'm glad that it gets a good reaction. Um. You know, every time something like this happens in in this show, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, well done, yeah, yeah, yeah." But you shouldn't have to celebrate and clap and cheer that somebody's doing this. You should just do it anyway. It shouldn't be a it big should deal. Be normal, shouldn't it? It really should. Like, yeah. it is an everyday thing, and it should just be, just it happens. Oh, okay, fair enough. And they haven't like romanticized it in any way. It's fucking horrible. Nobody wants to go through it, but it's tough. It, you know, and they happens. don't. Yeah. yeah. You know, they don't make a, like a massive deal out of it, but it's the reaction from everyone else. It just kind of makes me a bit sad. But the more we see it, the more kind of normalised it will be, I guess, won't it? That's, that's but, the assumption. Um, yeah. And it works. Oh, when, well as... Sorry, carry on. No, go on, go on. No, I was just going to say, and then when they move away from Victoria's Secret and they start to go further into the mall to start exploring, there's a really brief moment when Ellie walks back to the shop and I think I thought at that point she was going to go in and get something and be like oh look what I've got but she didn't it was another really small moment where she kind of just checked her hair yeah did you notice notice that yeah. like Checking that was um, that's when that, I first started clicking that may, there may be some sort of some sort of romantic feeling at least it was one way so subtle but it said so much yeah but I don't know if a lot of people picked up on it, but it shows kind of how vulnerable she really was. Isn't it the whole thing with women? If, if, a, if a woman's playing with her hair whilst you're talking, she's interested. That whole thing. And that's kind of like, she's gone back and gone and checked her hair to make sure she's looking yeah. nice and stuff. And I was like, yeah. okay, that might, be a, that might be a little something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, was it the first up is the arcades, isn't it? The arcades first? Mm-hmm. Now... Yeah, the arcades are happening, and they found Mortal Kombat, which is awesome. <laughs> um, she actually has a poster of it up on her wall in her room. She did. So that was yeah. quite a cool little nod, and they're playing Mortal Kombat. And again, it's like every kid, the first time they play one of those sort of games, how do you play it? I don't know, just smash the buttons. Smash the buttons, I Use remember. Use the joystick as well. Use the joystick. <laughs> we were in... Um... We took the kids to Ibiza a couple of years ago. Well, it was more than a couple of years ago now. They must have been sort of five or six. And in the hotel, they had some of those old school arcade machines. Oh, yeah. And Logan, Logan and Hudson both were like, yeah, brilliant, let's go. And it was, it was a Street Fighter one. Yes. It's slightly different, but the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that exact scene happened in that hotel in Ibiza. It was just, smash the button, see what happened, you know. And it was brilliant. You know, uh, uh, again... Those small little details people can relate to. Everybody's done that. Everybody's gone and smashed the hell out of one of those arcade machines because oh, they don't know what do. they're doing. Um, I nearly bought the boys one for Christmas. Did you know you can buy them in Smiths? Don't tell Full me. Full size one. Don't tell me because yeah. like that that's just... I nearly bought one, but Ryan told me no. That's, that's got man cave <laughs> written all over it. And as I'm slowly yeah. trying to create a man cave in our house. <laughs> at the moment, my man cave is full of Funko Pops. Please sponsor us and <laughs> other Marvel memorabilia and a lightsaber. So I do feel that an arcade machine would fit very nicely. Yeah, you could buy a tabletop version as well. So it's like half the size, but still full-size screen. Oh. Yeah. 
The Last of Us has just opened up an argument between my wife and I. That is. I know. Sorry, Nat. That. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Um, so they're they're playing the arcade, and then they. There's like a light outage or something happens, and that's when I start going, oh, oh. And that's when my my jump scare started going up a little bit. Um, yeah. Oh, we've missed but, the, mean, we've missed the merry go round. The merry go round. Yeah, get on a carousel. And... Same thing, isn't it? Sorry. Same thing, isn't it? Merry go round carousel. Yeah, but they they yeah. jump on one of these and they go around. Now my only thing is the horse didn't go up and down. How just? No, it didn't. I was really she, disappointed. She got on the wrong horse. Because I was waiting for her to go, oh my god, it's moving! Yeah, but then they start going round, and again, there's just a couple of looks that go between them. Very, very mm. subtle little looks, and they're still talking. And Riley's, Riley's always trying to convince Ellie the Fireflies are good. Like, the whole mm. way through this episode, there's little bits that she says, and little things to kind of try and get Ellie to understand that they are good. And we end up finding out that actually, um, after this, Ellie gets taken to, is it like a taco belly sort of place, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, she has the tacos, doesn't she? Have oh, I got tacos? That's it, Montrose yeah. Tacos or something it's called, yeah. yeah. Um, and she's given volume two of the Book of Puns. Um... And then we, we start getting some fantastic jokes, like, what do you do? What did the frustrated cannibal do? He threw up his hands. You know, there's all lots of fantastic jokes. And gonna... that, again, the callbacks, and you can see why she uses those jokes with Joel, because it's something that she knows that is going to get a reaction yeah. and build a bridge and build the relationship because she's already done it. You know, it's it's almost like a... Um, a memory for her yeah. of, you know, how to build a relationship with somebody. So yeah, I really like that. And they, the jokes are brilliant. I love I love. I mean, my favourite one was, how does a computer get drunk? It takes screenshots and then just silence. <laughs> what what are screenshots? Yeah. Like, no idea. <laughs> Absolutely not got a clue. Yeah. Although, back when this obviously was supposed to be happening, what year was this? This is like nowadays, isn't it? But obviously the apocalypse is 20 years of what had happened. So so... The tech, really, the technology back when everything went to shit wouldn't have evolved to the point where you could take a screenshot on a phone. Because if no. it was the early 90s, well, no, the screenshot would have been, even existed there. It would have been the 2000, I think it's 2002, 2003 is when the apocalypse starts. And then we're now 20 years on. But even so, yeah, if you, if these kids have been brought up in this world, you're still not going to know what a smartphone is. Because, no. Well, there's not going to be any reception and anyone running smartphones, no. is there? Because all the things would have run out. So, yeah, even so, they would even with the technology there, these kids wouldn't know it. Yeah. Because they were all born in... All born in this place. That's crazy. Yeah. Anyway. It was side note, though. It side note. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> What would we do without phones if we take screenshots to show people things? I know. The amount of screenshots I've got on my phone is disgusting. Like It's just so unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm the same. Mine is mostly just pictures of the kids, but that's that's my phone. Like, oh, look, the baby smiled today. Take a picture. Oh, oh we've all been well, book day. <laughs> I am... I, I tried to get the wife to agree to let me send uh, Fletch in. He's, so he's only five. Try and send him into school for World Book Day as uh, Joel from The Last of Us. It wasn't allowed. Apparently it's not a book, so it's not allowed. Uh, well, my friend's kid went to school dressed as Hellboy when he was five. Legend. He terrified everybody in the infants. What a legend. It was brilliant. I'll have to say, I've got a picture of it. I'll send it to you. There we go. So, there we go. Right. That won't be on the Discord server. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we kind of get this now. An argument happens at the taco place when mm-hmm. Ellie realises that actually this is where Riley's been living. Yes. And that is where kind of everything just kind of flips, doesn't it, really? Mm. And we, we've kind of got this... This confrontation between the two of them where Ellie is fuming that 
you know, she's she's thought that Riley was dead all this time. Now she's come back, given her like this fantastic night of all these surprises and everything else. And then now she's like, oh yeah, but by the way, I'm leaving tomorrow. This is my last night in Boston. Bye. Yeah, that was that was that was pretty harsh. Um, but really kind of effective, I guess. You know, you've had all of these these five wonders that they've got to the fourth one by this point. Um, these these f- wonders that that Riley wanted to show Ellie and the photo booth as well. Brilliant, love yeah. that. That so of the now. You know, we all love a photo. but well, I love a photo. No matter booth. how old you are, if there's a photo yeah. booth there, you're in there <laughs> taking pictures. Absolutely. And the um, first picture is always the exact same of no one quite knowing what is happening. No, no. When is it going to go? When is, when is it going to go? Oh. oh, it's gone. Crap. Get the next one. Quick. Pose. Mm. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, so again, another really, really amazing rite of passage. It w- just would have been folklore to them at that time. You know, all of these things are coming to life for Ellie tonight and all these wonderful things are happening. And then bam, Riley says, I'm off. You can yeah. just see the moment that she kind of breaks inside it was devastating yes, to she, see she was not unfortunately she was not happy about it and they have this long discussion and ellie's having a go at her and how riley's chose the butter well the, the fireflies chose her and ellie's kind of well you know i chose you first sort of thing happening and it's all like a real i i have never gone through, gone through a situation where i've lost a friend moving away sort of thing so i, I, I never mm-hmm. go through this sort of thing but i imagine kind of this must have been quite a quite a moment for her and then she storms off um as she goes to storm off we see a cutaway to another part of the mall and we see our first infected Mm. and it looks very much like he is connected to this hive mindy sort of system they've got and in my brain this is where i start going oh this is about to turn really bad like I'm expecting Ellie to open a door and there'd just be like hundreds of infected running in or something. And I'm like, oh, I can't take this. Like, yeah, I know Ellie survives because this is a flashback. Yeah. So I know Ellie survives, but I also know Ellie's going to get bit because she has not been bitten yet. And mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. that at some point here, she has to get bitten at some point because mm-hmm. she's been bit a few weeks ago when she's with Joel. Yes. And now all of a sudden my brain sees this one infected and I'm starting to go into overdrive like, oh my God, what is going to happen? And suddenly realise this is what you guys feel. Yeah. <laughs> like every minute of every episode, I'm now suddenly going, oh wow, I'm putting these people through this, making them watch this. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you feel bad. I hope you feel bad. Yeah, I do. I genuinely do. I've watched this episode. I do. <laughs> But that was the moment that I thought at this point, this is when Ellie is going to get bit. You know, we knew that this was coming anyway. We knew that this was the episode that this was going to happen. But I I was, again, very naively. I knew it wasn't going to be the, the, the case. But I was genuinely hoping that she was going to get out that door. She was going to get bit and she was going to run off and she was going to get picked up by Marlene. And then Riley, we just wouldn't see anything more of her. <laughs> and then we might have, Sorry. you know, this big reunion. Yeah, I know. Like, you know, oh, there'll be a lovely reunion and she'll find her friend again, you know, in the last episode and all will be well with the world. Um, but no. No, 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 no. Not, not in the last of us. Not to have a nice show. episode. It's just too much. I know. So this is episode seven. And how many people have we had killed off so far? Oh, I've lost count. It's got to be up there. I, mean, I reckon we're probably level three. We're in double season. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got, got to be one an episode at least. Now. <laughs> if you include the the Bill and Frank, well, that was two in one, so that that helps out, you know. Um, so yeah, Ellie runs off really pissed off at Riley, mm. and then we hear the screams. Uh, yeah. Ellie's kind of stopped herself and kind of realised she's being stupid by running away. She needs to go back and talk to us, and as she turns round, we hear these screams. And, oh, man, my heart just dropped. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, like, I thought she'd been go back. We're going to get back, and Riley's going to have been, like, bitten or torn apart, and, oh, yeah. it's going to be awful. But we actually yeah. get back and find out that this is all part of the final the final surprise 
was a Halloween store with a skeleton that sits up and screams. <laughs> and there's a little part of me that's kind of like, you bastards. Yeah. Like, they really had me on that. They proper had me on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did. And again, they kind of have this little conversation and Ellie's kind of like, you know, I'm going to miss you, you're going to miss me and all this sort of thing. And they they put their masks on. They have a dance because she takes the Mickey out of her Walkman that she's stolen off from the room. And they're yeah. dancing on the tabletop. Well, dancing on the tabletop on the um, counter and stuff. And again, I'm like, oh, all's going well. And then that little bit in the back of my, hat, my mind goes, this is The Last of Us. The last thing you want is everything to be going well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like yeah. every time something's gone well, it has gone wrong. Mm. And um, it does. A, a infected runs in. I, I'm guessing we're going to classify this one as soon as a runner. I don't think it was a clicker. Oh, I, I don't think it was a They're all gross. They're all gross. <laughs> Runners, clickers, and bloaters. Yeah. Um, not any you'd want to invite around for tea, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but this thing, it definitely comes running in and starts attacking everyone. Um, oh, I, I've missed the bit that really peed off most of America. Ellie kisses Riley. Oh, whoa, big whoop. Someone kissed somebody. Oh, no, everybody go mad. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> big deal. That was a big deal on social media. It was. People went absolutely savage over it. And the ratings, like the Bill and Frank episode, everyone just went on and absolutely tanked it because they're bigoted assholes yeah i was as soon as i saw and saw this i was like yep yeah, there we go i know where this is gonna go right okay uh you say about the ratings ironically yes the two lowest rated on imdb because you know that is my source again sponsor us if you want to that is There's my source of information <laughs> the two lowest episodes was an eight which was long long time bill and frank and left behind 7.5 they are the two lowest ranked, funnily enough. Um, but yeah, so then we have the kiss and they've kind of... I'm now thinking to myself, okay, so we've been expecting that to happen. That that was obviously something that was building towards. You could tell by the way they were looking at each other and how they kind of were acting around each other. That was something that was potentially underlying there. Yeah. Um, they have the kiss and all things are going well and then all of a sudden boom in runs this infected runner and starts attacking them um, bearing in mind that Riley has a gun and has been trained by the fireflies won't lie I expected her to do a little better yeah but you have to remember she's only been gone a couple of weeks she's never really encountered a live one before she she is only a kid they're in a mall they're they're alone she's probably absolutely bricking it yeah true maybe i'm I'm maybe being a bit too critical of her character there but i was kind of like why did you want to shoot it in the head shoot it in the head even even ellie knew stab it in the head like why did she not know to shoot it in the head so that was my only kind of my only gripe but they they do get attacked and in the end after being thrown through shelves and everything else (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they did pretty well to get back up from that, mind you. <laughs> they did well. Um, in the end, they are able to kill the infected. And that is when they kind of look at each other and realise Riley sees the bite mark on Ellie's arm. Now, mm. this is one of those things that this is the second person now this has happened to. Because we had little Sam as well get bit. Oh, Sam. Now, I don't know about you, but... Have you ever had, like, a toddler bite you? <laughs> Obviously, yes. <laughs> it freaking hurts. It does. And you know it's happened. But this is the second person now that's been bitten, and or, and they were about to have the third person that's been bitten, where they've not really given any reaction to get getting bitten. Like, I, think, I think that's a product of the situation. I think... If you're in a scenario where all hell's breaking loose and there's shit flying about everywhere, if you cut yourself or you're stabbed or, bit, you know, whatever, whatever it might be, the adrenaline is so high until everything kind of goes quiet, you you, you don't even know. 
Yeah. This might just be showing that I'm definitely a lover, not a fighter, and never been a big enough fight to go through it's, this. But yeah. I think it's almost like a delayed reaction, isn't it? You know, in the heat of the moment, if you're, I don't know, God forbid, in a car accident or anything, and, you know, you're injured, it's not until everything comes to a halt and you go, oh, oh no, look, my leg's hanging off, whatever it might be. You gotcha. know, it's that adrenaline that adrenaline thing I think and it, it was there was so much it was so chaotic you know they were ripping down the shelves and throwing stuff and she launches the knife you know yeah you, you've just got no time to think about what's going on around you and how see I'm taking this from someone who if I bite my tongue I cry still so yeah. <laughs> okay like oh there's nothing worse than biting, biting the inside of your lip or biting your tongue whilst you're eating oh it's horrific absolutely so, so but if, you, me, if, you, like, if, if I get in... shot or if I get bit by someone, the first thing I'm going to do is go, ah, you bit me, you know. But... Yeah, if somebody just walks up to you and bites you on the ass, then yes, you're going to notice. But if you were fleeing for your life, running down the road and you bit your tongue, you wouldn't know until you stopped. Ah, uh, possible. Okay. Okay. I'll let them have that. Right. I'll let them have that. Because like, it was when Sam got bit. The fact no one knew Sam had been bit. I was like, surely that kid would have bloody screamed when he got bit. But it, again, he was hiding under the car and everything was coming at him and it was all crazy and wild and, yeah, I don't know. I, I get it, but maybe you're just a bit more sensitive than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is seventh episode and you've cried seven times. I think you're the more sensitive one here. <laughs> but they, well, they, have nope. both, they, they both get bit and uh, when Ellie has finished smashing the entire store up... Um, now, that's a reaction I understand. Ellie's been yeah. bit. We find out Riley's been bit as well. Her reaction is to grab something and just smash the crap out of everything. And I'm yeah. like, yep, that's that's my reaction. I bite my tongue, I cry, but I normally punch the table or something first. I'm like, yep. <laughs> that is, I understand that one. And um, Riley gives, gives a little, uh, we've got two options. Yeah. So option one is the easy way out, quick and painless, but I don't like that option. So option two is we just keep going. Ellie's very much like, no, it's over, we're dead, we've been done. And Riley, it's kind of like the sensible, the voice of reason is like, well, it will be over, but it's not now. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to die eventually, some faster than others, but if we don't quit, and then she kind of goes about, I think I've written down the line here, if it's two minutes or two days, we don't give up. Don't want to give up. Uh, we can just be all poetic and shit and lose our minds together. Yeah. To which Ellie's, Ellie, Ellie's the option is, what's option three? Yeah. Like, <laughs> quick way out, lose our minds. What's option three? Now, obviously, what they don't realise is that Ellie is option three. Yeah. Um, They hold each other and kind of hug each other. And then it cuts back to us back with Joel and Ellie searching for stuff in the now. Yeah. Um. The only thing is, we never actually find out what happens to Riley. No, well, that was one of my questions. That scene when they're smashing stuff up, or well, Ellie's smashing stuff up, and the contrast between the two of them, you know, Riley's quiet and kind of resigned to her fate and stuff. Yeah. It kind of made Ellie make a lot more sense in my mind. You know, seeing someone that you love just kind of give up makes you so much more determined to fight, which is when we cut back and you see Ellie kind of go, fuck this, I'm I'm not letting this happen. You know why? Yeah, because Joel is in that kind of resigned, I'm done, yeah. leave me here sort of thing. Absolutely. And I think that there is a lot of contrast between Joel and Riley. You know, Riley was very switched on, knows what's what, very pragmatic about the whole thing a bit like joel you know we've got to do what we've got to do yeah. whereas ellie's snap reaction kind of screams a little bit towards her kind of innocence and naivety i suppose and i i just i think it just knitted that whole thing together so well so would you say without having gone through the riley situation that she went through she wouldn't go through the joel situation and have the, the the thought process of nope i need to save him as much no, I don't think she would. I don't think... No, I don't. I think if, if Riley... If the whole thing with Riley hadn't have happened, Ellie wouldn't know the risk. She wouldn't know the risk of, you know, having to feel another loss. It would just be, well, 
I, I, I don't know how it's going to feel if I lose jo, uh, Joel. So, you know, we'll just see what happens. But because she's been through that with Riley, which is why this episode was so important. And it's not just a why we needed this episode. Absolutely. So, <laughs> I love you, but no, you're wrong. This is why we need the episode. <laughs> um, so the episode, uh, episode finishes with Ellie trying to basically sew up Joel's wound. Yes. Now, there's the little cynical part of me, and it's just a teeny tiny cynical part of me. It had that, as she was sewing him up on the outside, the part of me goes, yes, but what about the internal bleeding? Yeah. It's yeah. all very good and well putting a plaster over it sort of thing. However, internal bleeding, you're not sewing that up, are you? However, I'm going to go back to the, it's a game, it's based on a game, it's a TV show about a game, it's fine. Yeah, I didn't really read too much into it. The thing that got me, though, <laughs> that I really appreciated in that moment was seeing everybody has a crap drawer in the kitchen. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And so <laughs> everyone, you know, like batteries, knives, all sorts of random rubbish in it. You know, yeah, a, a, a reel of cotton and a needle and a tape measure and a pair of scissors. You know, everybody, even in a post-apocalyptic world, everybody has a Monica cupboard. Uh, mine's a cupboard, drawer. it's yeah. not even a drawer. Mine's a cupboard. Um, <laughs> you know, and that really made me chuckle. So that was a little bit of like relief in 45, yeah. 50 minutes of just rah. So yeah, I like that. The crap cupboard. So the crap cupboard comes to save the day. Absolutely. That's why we all need one, see? I don't need to clear it out because one day somebody yeah, might stab you. Yeah, and I'll have a roll of string. Exactly. <laughs> Now, obviously, I know what's going to happen to Joel in the, after this episode, so that's um, less said the better, just to leave you in, you know. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. But I would, I know that we always laugh and we all take the piss out of me, but I I did pretty well tier-wise <laughs> throughout this episode. You're and whilst, thank you, whilst it was, you know, really hard to watch with Ellie and Riley, I didn't shed a tear until that final 30 seconds. The hand coming up and grabbing her. That, well, that was it. I was a mess. Blubbering. <laughs> crying. Oh, my God. But I think that's pretty well. Cry count one. I um, am very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, getting better. Next week, I reckon two. Oh, for God's sake. Two. Okay. All right. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I have covered all of, I like to follow Sam's rule and go, I, fo I followed all of my notes, but those who follow the podcast know I don't make notes, I wing it. <laughs> um, and even though I am currently in quotations running the desk, as Sam says, I still have no notes. I am still just winging it. So I have winged it all I can. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to, to add, Kaylee? Um, I think we covered most things. I think there's just a couple of things for me that we might, find out in the next couple of episodes one has ellie still got those photos stashed in her bag i, I want to assume see, so i want to see those photos that'd be nice yeah yeah um and i assume again we'll find this out later on how did ellie get picked up by marlene does she go and find her after riley if you know does she kill riley and then finds marlene or my marlene comes to her like how do they hook up that kind of I would have expected to have seen that in that flashback yeah um and the fireflies themselves you know I need to know more about them they're really questionable in their methods I think um and this is something that I saw online somebody asked those pipe bombs that we saw yes. in the mall were those the ones that the fireflies used at the very beginning when Tess was there and blew got blown up around i that would believe be so i'm not definite but i believe so mm. um if she had been sent there to make them i would assume the fireflies have gone and got them back yeah but, but again, again there's questions that could well be answered hopefully soon yeah and it goes back to that whole who's the good guy and who's the bad guy it depends on your viewpoint really doesn't it because um I always call her Melanie, but that's her real name, isn't it? <laughs> Tess? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, the woman from um, Kathleen, I think it was. Kathleen, that's it. 
you know, from her point of view, she was the good guy. Yes. The other point of view, the firefly, you know, so I'm I'm really struggling with that a little bit, but I quite liked it. I don't know. Um, I guess my biggest question is how are we going to tie this up? There's two episodes left. Yeah. What, how could, and apparently I've seen the running times are pretty short, 45 and 50 minutes. Yeah, I we, expected the finale to be a lot longer, but no, I thought it was going to be like an hour and a half, like movie episode, you know. Yeah. How, the, how the hell are we going to tie all this up? Well, would you like to know the good news? Yeah, I always yeah. love a bit of good news. Obviously, season two has been confirmed. So are there two games? There are two games, yes. So season two going to be like that next I, game? I personally <laughs> believe we will get a season two and a season three. And season two and three will be the second game split over them. Now, I have okay. not played the second game, so that I need to get that completed before this is released. I think you should uh, not play it and then be in my shoes. Every every bloody week. <laughs> Just to feel how you guys feel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised I haven't played it because I love the first one so much that I didn't play the second one purely because I didn't want the first one ruined. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but yeah, I think season two and season three will be the second game split over the two, which does mm -hmm. mean I believe they will complete this game in season one. Right. But yeah, there's still... There's a lot to happen still. Yeah, I just, I don't know how, either it's going to be, they're going to miss lots of stuff out and it won't be like the satisfying ending that we wanted or it'll be a cliffhanger and we still don't get a satisfying ending. Either way, I think I'm going to be fuming at the last episode. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some big things still to happen. Yeah. Like, I mean, I say if you cry less than twice in the next episode, I'll be amazed. Wow, okay. And the finale, whoa, yeah, wow, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> okay. You're not going to talk to me for weeks. I'm going to need a holiday, I think, after all therapy? of this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can see our last episode just being like a proper therapy session. Uh, uh, oh, 100%, 100%. But I, I do think that we all need to, the three of us need to schedule when we watch it and we watch it at the same time. <laughs> that could work. I Just, can make that work. So I've got somebody to feel the pain with me. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Rather okay, than well, you sending stupid emojis going <laughs> at me. Yes. No, we'd never do that. Yeah, even do you know, even and Ryan, another call out for you, Mr. Discord fan, taking the Mickey. I need less of that, please. It would let be on Sam, not me. All right. I do love the fact that <laughs> Sam, to be fair to him, hasn't had much abuse recently on the Discord. It has kind of been aimed to you. I know, I know. So yeah, enough of that, please. And then I need to go and watch something that's very light and funny. Do you know what? I might watch She Hulk again just to piss everyone off. Just because it's uh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah that is i believe that is the end of our podcast um like i say if you want to get in touch with us all the normal routes are there we've got the facebook page we have the instagram page we've got twitter we're on tiktok and of course as i say the discord server um get yourselves involved get in chatting with us um again we wish sam best recovery and hopefully he is back next week we will see but until then it is goodbye from me and Bye. Thank you for listening to the Stuff and Things podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. <coughs> you can find us on Facebook or online. Simply search the Stuff and Things podcast to join in our conversation every week. <laughs>